In our previous segment, you learned how hazardous power lines can be. Now we'll show you how to stay alive if one falls in your car. Construction workers or drivers whose vehicles accidentally come in contact with a power line should stay put. At the moment, your tires are acting as insulators. Oh, jeez. Power lines. So you're safe. It's vital not to touch both the vehicle and ground simultaneously. Coworkers should keep away, even if the circuit seems dead after contact. Circuit breakers try to reset automatically every 30 seconds before locking out after two attempts. If you can, try to break contact by inching your vehicle back from the wires or call 911 to get the line moved. If someone is forced to abandon his vehicle, it's important to remember that making a bridge between ground and charged equipment could prove fatal. Victims should not simply step away. Instead, they should fold arms and jump, landing with both feet together. No part of the body should touch the vehicle while jumping from it or later. If you touch it again, you'll be electricity's path to ground. Once the vehicle is cleared, it's time to do a shuffle along the ground to avoid making an arc with any residual charge. Be sure to warn all emergency responders that the car is energized. Anybody who makes contact with the power line should report the incident to the Department of Water and Power at 1-800-DIAL-DWP. Unseen damage could down the line later. Downed electric lines raid a 911 call. If they are sagging noticeably, call 311. A metal fence can become electrified by a live power line falling on it. You might not even see the point of contact, but the fence could still be as dangerous as that around a prison. Not only will it energize that one piece of chain link, but it'll energize the whole fence line. Let's take a look. Same thing, electricity trying to get back down to ground through his feet, and that's the situation we don't want to be in. We had an accident where a crane backed into a power line, and the back end of the crane was actually touching the fence. And the boom came in contact with the wire, but he wasn't aware of it. And the guy's sitting in the crane, and it had energized the whole fence. And a construction worker came to unlock the gate, and it actually killed me. It was very, very sad. If you don't have a conviction, solid conviction in your heart, I, I want to go home tonight. I want to see my family. If you don't have that conviction, then you're not going to work safe. You're going to cut a corner. 75%, 80% of the time, you get away with it. But it's not worth that one time you don't get away with it. And you get bit. And you know what? People don't go home. The guy that I was with didn't go home. I didn't go home for three and a half months before, after my accident. He never went home. Children have to be especially careful with electricity. Compared to adults, kids are more vulnerable. If you guys are going to be flying kites close to power lines, you want to make sure the kite stays away from the power lines. He got his kite maybe caught up in the power lines. And it starts to arc, right? And it's going to go back down that string, and it can actually hurt Franklin. Mylar balloons pose a greater electric hazard than kites because the silvery coating acts as a conductor. If they get caught by power lines, they can arc, causing intense heat that can short a transformer, knock power lines down, and damage home appliances. Recently, downtown Oakland had a Valentine's Day power outage. In Los Angeles, a major shopping mall lost electricity when Mylar balloons got into nearby power lines. State law requires that metallic balloons be sold with weights, but they are often detached. Climbing a tree is a lot of fun, but it's not safe if a power line runs through it. This tree is actually come in contact with one of our power lines. These power lines don't have a plastic insulation on them like these do that protects them from you coming in contact with them. And the reason why is this power line gets pretty heavy. So what happens is they leave the insulation off because it would get heavier and heavier and heavier and heavier, right, if they had all that weight up there. The other thing we got to do is we got to dissipate a little bit of our heat. Our system generates heat when it flows through the wires, and we want to dissipate some of that heat. Tree sap and rain can act as conductors, making children the path to ground. This is the last place you want to build a treehouse. If you have no trees in your neighborhood, don't be tempted to climb utility poles instead. Leave this to the pros. They never climb without personal protective equipment. The risk multiply with the number of power lines on a pole. Keep model airplanes, shoes, rockets, and kites away. Tennis shoes, stuff like that, all kinds of stuff that gets thrown up into the power lines. And a lot of people think that they can go knock that stuff down. So they grab a broom, 
and they're standing on the ground and they try to knock that stuff back down. Now if the broom is made out of wood, can the electricity come down that? Yeah. We just learned that wood will conduct electricity, right? So that's not a smart idea. And we even see some accidents where people use metal pull brooms. So the best thing to do is call us on the 311 system and tell us where your location is and we'll come get that stuff down and we'll leave it at the base of the pole or you can dial 1-800-DIAL-DWP.